Good morning, everyone. My name is Bryce, um, for those of you that haven't met me, and I'm here to talk about Google Cloud Run. Uh, about a month or so ago, I talked about the prediction service um, or invoice prediction uh, project that the AI of the Tiger team is working on, and how we switched to making predictions using uh, Kubernetes and Google. Um, and that's been working pretty well for us. Um, but it had the, the unfortunate side effect that we essentially have to run our own Google Kubernetes cluster and we have to, you know, if we want to handle spikes in processing invoices, let's say some user submits a hundred invoices at once, um, wouldn't it be great if we could just parallelize and process all a hundred at the same time, um, kind of like using AWS Lambda. Downside is not trivial to write the code that we need to make predictions in Lambda, um, but we make predictions inside of a container. So wouldn't it be cool if there was like a Lambda-like uh, service for, for containers? Well, Google Cloud Run does exactly that. Um, this idea, um, I was talking with Mark Dodson um, in the uh, invoice man or, um, investment management team and he, he told me about Google Cloud Run as an option. So I wanna give a little demo about Google Cloud Run and how you might use it and just kind of like general, hey, I wanna write a Python service that, that can scale, um, what that might look like. So that's what, what this is going to be about. Um, so I'm just gonna start and kind of go over some of this code I have here. So Google Cloud Run, um, it basically, it takes a Docker container, and in that container, um, let's take a look. Uh, we need to have a server running that listens on port, port, which comes in as an environment variable. So this is a simple Docker file. For those of you that haven't seen it, it says inherit from the, the Ubuntu 18.04 base image. Um, run an update, install Python 3 and the Python 3 package manager, clean up some stuff. Um, and then using the Python 3 package manager pip, um, install Flask, which is a lightweight framework, uh, web framework. Gunicorn, which is, um, think of it like Passenger. It's the application server um, that will, it actually acts as the HTTP server too in this particular case. Um, accept requests, and then we need to set up tools for Unicorn to run. Um, but it doesn't depend on it for some reason. Uh, then we have an app.py, and I'll talk about that. And then the command that we expose is we basically, when we start the container, we say Unicorn, we bind on the port, so it's listening to a specific port. Um, I want to fix it so it uh, supports parallelism with threads. So I set the workers to one, so it doesn't do processes, process-based parallelism. That would be fine, but um, threads work fine. And then I set the number of threads to 80. Um, and that's because the maximum concurrency uh, a single container supports in Google Cloud Run is 80. Um, so I'm gonna do uh, support and parallelism of 80 here. I'm gonna have my app. So this is in my Docker container. Uh, and then I can open up my app and it's pretty straightforward. It's a Flask app. Um, it has a route, which is slash, and then you can give it some thing, which I've bound to name here. Um, just so it's kind of interesting that there's some delay in requests, it sleeps for three seconds. And then it returns to the caller hello and reflects the name. And the only reason why I added name here was just so you can show I'm not repeating the same request over and over again. I'm actually making very distinct requests as I do this. Um, so we'll see how, how that works with the concurrency. Um, and I can actually show you this running. Um, I have a run local script here, which calls flask app, flask run. And I told it to run without threads um, because this will make it such that it only um, handles one request at a time, a concurrency of one. So this is the very simple development mode. I have this script. Um, which I'm not going to really go into too much, but concurrency test. Basically, it starts up a pool of workers. They all make HTTP connections to the, uh, the URL, and it includes the request number. 
um, in the request, and then it outputs the status codes, the count of how many returned with a certain status code. So if I run this concurrency test without any arguments, it's going to prompt for the domain, which essentially is localhost 5000 here. And one concurrency, one request, it takes a little over three seconds with a sleep of one. And then I can up the concurrency. Um, like let's say I want the concurrency to be 10. Um, it's going to try to make 10 requests. Now remember that this is a sequential server. Uh, I have a timeout for the request at 15 seconds, so it should only handle about three or four of them. Um, or sorry, five or six of them. And then the other one should time out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we see here status code counts. Five of them uh, succeeded, and then five of them timed out. And you'll actually notice that it's still making requests down here, and I think that's because um, Flask actually queued those up. It doesn't, hasn't checked to see that the callers like close this connection. So some of these are still going, but that's not a big deal. So that's locally, just to see how that script works. Now I can also run this in Docker. Um, so I also have this uh, run docker script. Um, and that's my, my command, docker run e. Um, did I build? No, I didn't. Okay, so uh, the way I, I'm going to build this docker file is docker build. Um, I'm going to give it two tags, tech demo, and then a tag, which is in a Google Cloud repository. I'm going to build this. It's already been built, so it's going to use the cache. Um, and then I can run it using this script. Um, run dash e, so I'm dynamically setting a port to 5000. I'm mapping the local port 5000 to the container port 5000. And then I'm running uh, the, the container tech demo. Um, so I'm going to run that um, down here. I don't remember how to switch. So if I do run docker, it's going to start up the docker container and it's listening. And um, so recall that in Docker, Unicorn set up to work with 80 threads. So now we can see some better parallelism. And this is, remember, this is, this is local. So localhost 5000, same port, uh, with a concurrency of 10. It finishes in 10 seconds. I should be able to go up to a concurrency of 80 um, and see that work as well. Um, and you see that there's really little extra time added. But as soon as I go to 81, uh, we should see that it takes closer to 6 seconds, or a little over 6 seconds. Um, and it does. And that's because it, um, even though I told it a concurrency of 81, it's actually um, holding on to one of those connections. Um, it's queued. And then, uh, yeah, so it's not timing out, it's queued, but it has to wait for one of the other ones to finish before it gets requested. So this is locally, that's great. But the, the real thing I want to show you is Cloud Run. And the reason behind that is because it makes spinning up uh, containers really easy. Now this is a contrived example of sleep. But imagine if you had something that had to do a lot of processing um, and takes a long time and you need a container for that rather than just a regular Lambda function. Um, so you'll note that I built um, a Docker container uh, with the GCE tag. Um, when I ran build, this, this right here. So what I can do is I can just push that. Now this assumes I have permission set up and I've actually already pushed this container. So that's just to show. So that pushes it to Google Cloud Run. And then um, I have a GCR deploy script. Um, just so it helps me. So the setup here is I'm gonna run gcloud Google Cloud Run is in beta, um, but they keep things in beta for a long time. So I run beta deploy, and then I specify the image. Um, I'm allowing it to run authenticated, unauthenticated, which means anyone, these, the uh, URL that it generates will be accessible by anyone. Um, I don't recommend that for a production service, but <clears throat> uh, sufficient for now. Um, this is the default, but the concurrency is 80. I could decrease that if, for instance, my container, the resources that they provide, a single resource, can't handle 80 concurrent instances. I want to decrease that. For now, I'm going to use 80. Um, 
my container needs about 256 megabytes of memory to run. Um, so I'm setting that. And then I have the timeout set to 30. I forget what the, the end result is. And then I give it a name. Um, so I'm going to run this. And uh, I deleted this beforehand. So it's going to create a whole new one, brand new. And it says some things. It's in the US Central 1 region. Um, so it deploys. And this, this whole thing is actually rather quick for a whole new thing. It's done. It gives me a URL. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to pass that into my, um, my script here and change this. So I should be able to do, well, let's start with two. Um, this should work pretty easy. Uh, now remember when I did it locally, it took just over three seconds. Here we're going to see it takes six seconds. I'm going to run it again just to show you that. Um, there is some overhead to starting up a new container. So you'll see that this container takes about three seconds to start up. It was a first request. Um, but the nice thing is, is that it'll scale down to zero. So I don't get charged anything while I'm not making requests. So this is really great for bursty traffic. Um, and I should be able to do 80 without any too much extra overhead. Yeah, 3.31 from 3.25. Um, but then recall, if I go into the 81st, it's going to have to spin up another container. So it should take about six seconds again. Um, or maybe it had already spun up another container because it didn't really take much longer at all. Um, let's try to go to 159 and see what happens. Um, okay, well, 3.5. Let's go to 180. So now we should need three containers. And it's going to have to spin up a new one. Um, and yeah, so we see, well, 10 seconds this time. So we're seeing it's taking a little bit longer to do things, but it's it's doing this. This is great. Um, now, I can should be able to do something like 2,000 requests. And it's going to spin up a few more containers. Um, 2,000 divided by 80, whatever that is. You know, 25, OK. So let's see if and there were three running. So it's going to spin up like 22 new ones. We might get a few errors here. It's not super perfect when you send a lot of bursts. So yeah, actually you see here, 109, uh, almost all of them succeeded. But one request, 500 errors. Um, if I run it again, it should hopefully go faster this time. Um, faster than 19.7 seconds. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. And I'm not keeping track of how long it took for the individual. It'd be great if I showed like the stand, the average request time. Um, in theory, one would think this would be pretty quick, but no, that these all succeeded, but it still took 19 seconds. Um, and I haven't really looked into where that bottleneck is. Like, is there queuing on their end? So it's like actually sequentially running these instead of spinning up new containers. Maybe it's waiting for new containers to spin up or be allocated. So there, it jumped down to 15 seconds. Um, now, because I have to spin up a lot of threads locally, I can't go too much higher than 2,000. But what I really want to show you is, um, so here I'm making 2,000 across 25 containers. Let's say you had a heavy workload and you wanted to do something else. So I can modify uh, my deploy script. GCR deploy, and I can change the concurrency to, let's say, one. So I only allow one per container. And then I can rerun GCR deploy. <clears throat> and it's going to modify, it's going to basically create a new version, even though the code's the same. Um, a new version, but with a concurrency of one. Um, the URL will be the same. So this is effectively updating the existing application. Um, and that's done, and it gives me the same URL. And then um, let's try 2,000 again and see what happens. I think we're going to get a handful of failures. This time I would have to spin up 2,000 containers because each container can only handle one request at a time. And let's see what happens here. The timeout is at around 15 seconds, so it shouldn't take too much longer than that. Um, although there's a connect timeout and a lead timeout, so I guess it could take up to like 30 seconds. So actually here with 2,000 containers, we see that there were 
most of them succeeded, and one of them had a read timeout. We run it again, and let's see what happens. So with that little simple change, um, I'm now running 2,000 containers. Now it's kind of pointless. It's just sleeping. Um, but it just kind of shows you like the nice burstiness that, that this affords, um, which is really great. Now, I don't know why, like, oh, it takes 16 seconds to do 2,000 containers when, you know, doing fewer took less time. So there's definitely something that's not completely parallel there. It could be um, my concurrency test itself it takes a while to actually make all the requests. Um, so yeah, it takes a little bit less time to do 1,000. Um, but those are all containers running and super awesome. Um, and yeah, check it out. Maybe it'll work for you. Thanks.